Welcome back everybody. Hopefully another exciting and educational video here today at Blue Glow Electronics. Today I want to show you a couple things. Um, first, uh, built a new website and I thought I'd walk you through it. Um, second, talk a little bit about some emails and uh, that I've been receiving and outreach from others. Third, I thought I'd talk a little bit about some tube amp suggestions that I've, uh, that I've been asked about. Thought I'd talk a little bit about a t-shirt order, order I'm considering. And then finally I'd wrap it up with some recent swap fest finds. Uh, the reason I haven't been doing a ton of work lately uh, making videos is almost every weekend, the last few weekends, I've been traveling around the East Coast to various um, Swap Fest, Ham Fest, and other events, uh, scouring the land for electronic parts, components, and uh, whatnot. So let's dive on in and I'll walk you through our new website we've created. The beauty of traveling all the time for my job recently is that I've had some time at night I could sit down with a PC and create a website. And it's something I've been wanting to do for a long period of time. As most of you know, I use a Facebook site, but a lot, a lot of times I get feedback. People type in my address and they'll say, oh, I don't do Facebook, so they shy away. So what we did was we created a website, and you can get to it a couple different ways. First off, on um, blueglow.net, www.blueglow.net. I've also created a new domain name. It's Blue Glow Electronics. Dot com. Um, sadly, blueglow.com is taken by someone else and they're not even using it. And I've tried to acquire it over the years and it's just never worked out. At any rate, on the, um, on the home page, what you first get to is just a, a little page here about us. And I'll let you go read it. Uh, it tells a good bit about us, where we're located, what we, what we enjoy and whatnot. The second tab here, I really dive into our services. What we do, what we work on. Um, some, some of what we occasionally work on and typically what we don't service here. So you can find some good info on what we do and what we don't do. Um, then we jump kind of into our pricing tab, tells a little bit about our pricing, uh, tells a little bit about our bench fee, um, pickup time frames, and then a rough guideline. And that is, uh, you know, if your item's probably not worth $50, it's probably not worth having it restored, if that makes sense. Um, then I kind of get into a contact, how to get a hold of me, my email, my cell phone number, um, where I take in pickups at. Today I do not take in pickups at my house. Um, I have a friend that runs a record store and most of my stuff gets dropped off at his shop and um, then I pick them up from there and when I finish repairing them I take them back to his shop and you can pick them up and pay him. But I um, don't really have a good location inside the house here, mainly because of the dogs I have today. But I will tell you we're in the process of uh, remodeling a building out back, uh, getting some new concrete poured and various things where I'm going to have both a listening room, uh, a drop-off point for gear, um, as well as uh, where I'll store the majority of my equipment for uh, people to be able to look at and or purchase. So um, stay tuned, that's coming. Um, this is a great page. Uh, it kind of tells me my cue. So if you've submitted something to me, you'll know where you stand. Um, you can see right now in my queue, it looks like I've got about nine units in the queue right now. Um, I typically tell people about a week per item, so um, if you're new in the queue right now, your you know your repair would be about nine weeks out, something like that. And I'm going to start listing all the units I complete down here at the bottom to give people a feel for you know what I've what I've repaired in the past or whatnot. Um, got a tab here about our bench just you know I get a lot of questions from emails saying hey could you tell me a little more about the gear you use the test setup well I've got a detailed listing of all the gear here on our bench that we have today um, talk a little bit about our warranty how that works um, what's warrantied what's not etc you know a link to our good old Facebook site um, that we used to use and it's also right here on the right on every single page that you go to so easy to get to the, uh, the Facebook site that we've always used also got a tab here now for our YouTube channel uh, take us take us right to um, where you're watching these videos these days a tab that talks a little bit about what I'm usually looking to buy out there um, then I've got a pictures tab which is just a multitude um, of uh, pictures of things I've restored over the past years. Um, you know, I've got a lot of pictures from you way back, but they're um, analog pictures, as I call them, <laughs> physical pictures. I probably need to scan those in at some point, but this is a lot of them I've gotten since I've started, um, you know, taking digital pictures of the work. And I wish I'd have taken more pictures earlier. It was more about just doing the work back then, but. And then, finally, not last but not least, I have this Frequently Asked Questions tab, and it goes into a lot of detail about the questions that I get from you guys. So every time I get a new question from you, 
that I've not seen before, I'm going to add it on here. Um, that way, not only will I answer it to you in an email, but I'm going to add it here for other people to get uh, to get a good feel for the uh, the questions that that I get, and uh, it gives you a great insight into um, how we work and whatnot. So. I want to walk you through that. Um, hey, back here on this first tab, I'll give a shout out or some kind of small prize to whoever can uh, tell me what this picture is right here and what piece of gear it's out of. So a little trivia question for today. Next, I just want to say thank you to everybody that have sent me emails recently. I have gotten a multitude of emails, everything from, you know, thank you so much for what you do. It's really inspired me to go do things. I probably have received less, no less than 30 or 40 emails like that over the last few months. And, you know, that's what keeps me going, knowing that I'm inspiring others to uh, believe they can do this stuff as well. You know, I've had everything from, hey, I've decided to get some electronics education. Can you guide me and where I can get that at? Um, to, wow, you helped me fix uh, my unit. Um, I, I was able to do it on my own. And I also get a lot of feedback, you know. Uh, one thing I will say is, um, you know, I, I'm not perfect. And, um, you know, even though I've been at this for 30 years, I still learn something new every day. And there's there's a lot of spaces that it's not right or wrong. You know, I just do it one way, somebody else does it another way. You know, I get a lot of emails saying, well, why don't you do it this other way? Well, you know, I, hey, I, I wasn't aware that other way existed. Or, or maybe I've tried it and I like my way better, you know. But I'm always open, open to feedback, open to trying new things. And uh, together, I, I believe that's the beauty of the Internet and YouTube and the whole institutional knowledge space that we create out here by doing this kind of stuff is... Um, you know, I don't do this. For, I do it. I do do it for fun. But um, <laughs> I say I don't. You know, I don't make any money off of this. I'm just doing it for fun and to help others out and to, to uh, kind of capture what I've been doing um, all, all along anyway. All in the spirit of, uh, you know, I'm a lifelong learner myself, and uh, hopefully others are as well. And uh, we'll keep cranking these videos out. Anyway, I just want to say thank you. Up next, I got I got a question over the last week or so about. Um, Hey, I want to get into this. I want to build a tube amp, but um, you know, I'd like to get a kit because I don't think I can do it from scratch. You got any recommendations? And so, what I've got here, it's a guy named Bob Latino, and he runs a website. It's tubesforhifi.com. We'll put a link to that. And um, as you can see, he's got a couple of different things here on his site. One, um, uh, the old ST70 um, amp here. Um, he also has a new amp, which is kind of an upgraded version of the ST70. And then he also makes some, uh, you know, what he calls the M125 mono blocks. And uh, I've, I've had a couple of these on my bench over time, and they're real high quality stuff, really good. This ST120 is a killer. Um, I mean, this thing just, it competes with some of the top end amps out there. But you can see here on his site, he's got prices, um, details about them. The guy's great to answer questions. You know, you, you cannot go wrong with getting an amp from Bob Latino. I can tell you that. So um, highly recommend that. Another option you may would want to consider um, if you're going down this path would be uh, the good old Bottlehead site here. You know, uh, bottlehead.com. I've built a ton of these things, probably 20 or more um, Bottlehead units over time. Some for myself, others, some for other people. The guys that do the design, uh, Doc, um, really masters in the industry. They bring a lot of new innovation to the table. Um, this is something new they've got. They've got this little seductor single-ended EL34 amp. Um, amazing power supply in this thing. Um, you know, the bias is uh, pretty pretty tricky and unique that they're doing here. I think it's really cool. But, you know, for $569, you can get you a killer little unit here. Uh, probably need some pretty efficient speakers, but uh, nonetheless, uh, great little great little setup. You know, if you want to jump up from that, um, you've probably seen my video of the stereo more that I've got. Um, uh, that was one I bought already fixed and then uh, kind of repaired it. <laughs> um, but they've got lots of choices. And the same back here with, with Bob. You can see the prices and options or whatnot. But um, highly recommend either one of these paths for um, for a beginner tube amp build. And you can get great support. Bottlehead has a forum out there with lots of support. Um, you can post questions and get answers. and. Uh, it's just a real big community support set up, and uh, Bob's really great about answering questions as well. So, shout outs to both of those guys. Well, I was at a ham fest in Charlotte, North Carolina last weekend. Uh, spent most of Friday there and Saturday, 
And some somewhere Saturday, a guy walked up to me, an audio buddy of mine, and he he kind of said, "Hey man, why don't you have some T-shirts? Um, I'd love to have one of <laughs> your Blue Glow Electronics." And I was like, "Wow, I really never thought about creating T-shirts." So um, yeah, I kind of kicked in, and um, you know, there's lots of websites out here where you can custom design shirts, but this is just an idea I was kicking around this morning. Maybe some blue shirts with some my Blue Glow Electronics logo on it. Um, might get the guy, my graphic artist, to add some more words below that or something that say something like, um, you know, audio and hi-fi restoration specialist or something along those lines on there. I don't know. And maybe the website address. But anyway, it's just an idea I'm kicking around. Love to hear your feedback. Um, shoot me some notes. Uh, give me some thoughts. If, if you'd be interested in one, you know, basically probably get these things pressed up and, uh, and uh, sell them pretty much at cost. And I'm not really in this to make money, but um, if people would actually wear one, you know, I might uh, might make some of these things. So give me some thoughts. Okay, up next, what I thought I'd do is show you. Um, I've, over the past two weekends, I've been to two different swap fest, and I picked up a multitude of different pieces, and I just thought I'd show you some of it. One, we added a new piece to our bench. It kind of matches this BK Precision um, function generator that I use all the time. But it's a similar model line, but it's a uh, it's a regulated DC power supply. Basically, goes up to 20 volts, about 10 amps, and uh, it's got some uh, really neat uh, adjustable um, qualities to it with the uh, digital readouts for both uh, voltage, and you can adjust the current capabilities on this thing as well. So, I was quite happy to get that and uh, add it to the bench. Um, something else I picked up I thought was pretty neat. I'll show you here. I ran across one guy. He was basically, he was he's cleaning out an estate sale. Um, and somewhere in there, he had picked up all these iPods. And uh, I don't know if you guys know it or not, but I used to use a little iPod like this um, all the time on my bench here for playing audio through a, uh, through a cable, you know, with just a little two and a half millimeter jack on one end and then the uh, RCA cables on the other. By the way, these are made by a company called Monoprice and they're on eBay and I absolutely love them. This is about a six foot long cable. The thing I like about them, they're, um, they're really narrow here, they're really good quality metal. Um, you know, some, a lot of these are really bulky here and they, they don't fit really well in older vintage equipment when the RCA jacks are really close together. I've never ran into that problem with this. Um, the other thing here is um, that this end's really narrow and skinny and then it's got this little section here before the uh, the barrel here and the actual jack. Um, so a lot of times like on my phone here you can see I've got a case on my iPhone. Well I can't plug a lot of the adapters out there in because it hits the case but um, I don't find that to be the case and these things are cheap. They're about four bucks or five bucks shipped to you. Uh, in this six foot length. I've also got some four, um, three foot length ones and, and even some longer ones, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, now this is a 32 gig um, iPod here and the battery on every one of these has turned out to be absolutely great. Every one of them I tested have ran for at least four hours. So, um, you know, this was a 16 gig, a, another 16 gig, um, I think this is an 8 gig um, nano, and this is one of the older ones. It's a 4 gig, but they all work, believe it or not, um, and power right up. And uh, I was blown away by the fact that uh, these things were in such great shape. But uh, I picked them all up at a, a heck of a steal. I think I gave the guy, um, I want to say it was 60 bucks for all these. I probably, uh, honestly, I probably flip a couple of them on eBay because um, I don't need them all. And the black 32 gig I'm definitely going to hang on to and use here on the bench. I ordered a nice little case for it. And I'll probably hang on to this white 16 gig just uh, just for kicks in case this one ever dies. But maybe I'll make my money back out of those three and uh, keep the other two for free um, if it works out that way. found all kinds of stuff. Like this is a set of uh, genuine fluke test leads. I uh, bought these things for $3 and they're brand, brand new. Um, you know, you can buy cheap Chinese stuff for three dollars, but uh, these, these are genuine flute brand. Um, I'll have to walk around some and find some of the other stuff that I've uh, picked up. Found one guy there that had a bunch of electronic parts, and, uh, and talking to him, he had bought out some electronic wholesaler, and he was just trying to close this stuff out for pennies on the dollar. These are Bus brand, so U.S. made um, fuse holders, uh, 30 millimeter fuse holders. 
really good high quality ones and um, I bought 92 of them off of the guy that was every one he had um, and I paid about 40 cent a piece for them these things would be about three dollars and 95 cent um, and I've got some projects coming up where I can hopefully use these things so I was extremely happy to get um, a bunch of fuse holders here this was the deal of the century though um, you're probably wondering what the heck are those well um, they're little bitty um, bulbs and as you can see here they've got um, gold plated um, connectors on these things that most of them do and they um, so I was trying to figure out at the ham fest what they actually were um, because these are exactly the same kind of bulbs that go into Marantz for the uh, dial indicator lights um, to know whether you're on stereo or FM, AM, that type thing. So I looked up the part number on them and it came back and it kind of said these were 10 to 15 volt bulbs. And I thought, well, God, the Marantz bulbs are 8 volts. So um, back to the power supply. The reason I bought that power supply at the Swap Fest was um, so I could actually hook up one of these and turn that thing to 8 volts. Um, and see how well they lit up and they lit up perfectly fine at 8 volts so um, I think I've got a quantity here in this bag of 500 of the um, the little um, bulbs that get used in Amaranth units and I paid 5 bucks for this entire bag right here so um, I think if you go on eBay and order about 5 of these which would go in a Amaranth unit they usually cost you about $8 for 5 of them so um, I paid a penny a piece, and uh, most people are getting a dollar a piece or more for these things. But these will last me a lifetime, and I'm as happy as could be about that. Uh, you'll have to excuse the mess. I'm over here in a junk storage room where I've stacked some of this. But bought an old 1950s um, RCA electronics tube sign. It has um, the glass jars. They're basically uh, baby jars from the 50s that snap in here. So I need to go on eBay or somewhere and buy a bunch of old baby bottles and snap them in there but I think that'll make a great sign to hang up in the new shop we're working on. Um, about two pieces of equipment here. Both of these are um, ham radio transmitters but I really didn't buy them for that. I bought them for the power transformers that are on these. These are some Chicago um, transformer company transformers and um, these were some pretty high-end transformers as well and chokes so um, I might mainly buy, I bought these things, I think I paid $10 for one and $20 for the other, but I mainly picked them up for the transformers and chokes that I'll use on other equipment coming up down the line. This is probably my favorite find from the day though. It's uh, it's an old RCA, um, I think it's what, an MI2224 um, amplifier. Um, all original knobs, all original screws on this thing. Um, beautiful down inside. Um, this thing looks like it's been stored <laughs> in a box from the factory for many, many years. And uh, runs two six uh, six V sixes or six. No, these are six L sixes um, in the output. And uh, it's got a couple tubes here on the input. But you run both uh, phono or a microphone on this thing. So I'm just extremely happy with how that thing turned out. Lots of uh, you know, it's all gray, original paint, and. Uh, just glad to have that in the collection. This might be the most interesting thing I picked up. It's an old um, GE BC 375E transmitter along with the uh, TU5B uh, tuning unit below it. Um, and you might wonder why the heck would I want this. These came out of, um, this would have came out like a B-17 uh, bomber um, plane. This is a heavy, heavy, heavy <laughs> unit uh, from many 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 years ago but uh, you might wonder why I'm interested in this thing. Well, let me show you. This thing weighs a good hundred pounds or more. It's pretty massive. I mean uh, I'll give you a size comparison here. That's a little Sansui um, unit that I picked up uh, for parts or whatnot and you can just see this thing is massive compared to that Sansui unit which is big in itself but let me show you why I wanted it. If you take the pop the two little tabs and take the cover off the front of it, right there it is. Um, what you've got here is four 211 tubes in this thing, um, all vintage, and a nice um, all 2A3 tube in it. So uh, um, amazing, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to keep it together like this because. Uh, 
It's a nice display case for the 2A3 tubes. This thing would originally have used two tubes for the audio modulation and two tubes for the RF output, um, all being 211s. So uh, and those tubes are worth uh, way, way more than this piece of gear was. But I was absolutely ecstatic. A buddy of mine walked up to me at the ham fest that knew I did audio stuff and uh, he basically said, hey, are you interested in some 211 tubes? And I said, yeah. And uh, he said, well, I'll bring some tomorrow. Well, when he brought them, he brought them in this chassis. And he said, well, if you want the chassis to go with them, uh, you can have it for free. So um, I, I think it's a great display place, and I'll end up putting it up in the uh, shop uh, like this one day. And I ended up picking up this whole unit. So i got a strap, a nice case on top of it, and it's uh, it's got an audio oscillator here built into it. It's got an Audio 353A patch panel, which is what I was really after. And then it's got a nice uh, voltmeter uh, that will measure in decibels. So, uh, com complete audio test gear setup from the 1960s. And I uh, bought this whole thing for 20 bucks. Uh, it was kind of heavy to carry out, but um, <laughs> I was happy to get it. I also picked up uh, just an empty case here for $5, a uh, General Electric tube case. But it was a small one. I like that because I might, I might make this into a guitar amplifier at some point. And last but not least, while I'm in the room, I thought I'd show you this is what's next on my bench. It's a uh, Philco Stereophonic tube based um, little suitcase uh, turntable and amplifier and speakers. So uh, that'll be in one of my upcoming videos. And last but not least, here a Steco um, 10 amp, um, excuse me, 5 amp um, Variac. This is a uh, these things have been around a long time and they're well known as being a, a very precision variac um, for bench use. As a matter, a matter of fact, these make their way into a lot of laboratories and uh, various places. Um, I think new these things are like six or seven hundred dollars, um, maybe a little less. Um, but I picked this one up. It's missing the, the current meter was, was going out of it. And the guy said he basically put a piece of wire where the uh, where the current meter would have been, um, and he's been clamping a uh, a digital um, ammeter on it. Well, um, I'm going to look around on eBay a little bit and see if I can find an original meter for this thing, or something that's you know a five amp meter that fits there. If not, I thought about building a faceplate across it here, and maybe putting a digital voltmeter and a digital ammeter here on the face of this thing. But one way or another, I'm going to restore this, and it'll be become part of my bench. Um, and the guy had 30 bucks on it. I offered him 20 and he took it. So uh, you can't buy a cheap Variac for $20, much less a super high end one. And it works great. The AC voltmeter works great. I did what he did. I clamped an ammeter around that and it reads reads fine. Um, so everything's working about it. I just got to get a, uh, a meter going in here. I, I emailed Staco and said, hey, how much for a new meter for one of these? $212. Um, no, thank you. I'll find something that fits and uh, looks just like it or uh, works equivalently. So, But I was extremely happy about this find. And last but not least, yesterday locally here, I found a set of clips bales. Um, and uh, like a lost puppy, <laughs> they followed me home. I could not pass these things up. They're way too rare, um, way too tough to come by. They're basically uh, kind of a little bit of a combination between the La Scala and, uh, and and I've heard you know like the uh, clips horns, but I think more akin to those scholars. Um, um, clips is he made these for his wife because she basically complained about every set of speakers he made were not that cosmetically appearing appealing, and nor would she want them in her living room. Because if you've seen a lot of the scholars, they look kind of uh, kind of uh, like uh, industrial plywood, you know. So um, made a made a version that uh, looks really appealing to the eye. Uh, this is down in the shop where I'm working on right now, um, uh, getting a getting a building a room built, and um, that's where I'm going to end up with a listening room. And um, these are going to go in the listening room, so I'm pretty darn excited about that. Um, uh, they sit in here right now beside of our old convertible Camaro. It's a '69. Uh, beautiful car but uh, doesn't get a doesn't much like most of my hobbies don't uh, I'm not home enough to enjoy them but thought you'd get a kick out of these speakers oh yeah well and the guy brought me a box with those speakers and he said the crossovers are in the box and uh, the guy that I got the speakers from really didn't know anything about them he had gotten them from somebody that had passed away a friend of his and um, 
you know, it had the original Clips uh, crossovers in the box, which I was, you know, happy to see. And then I kept unwrapping, and there was a second set of crossovers in the box. And if you'll notice, um, I'm very familiar with the B&K sound. Um, these are um, Bob Kreitz crossovers, so I couldn't have been any happier to find the uh, this thing came with a set of Bob Kreitz crossovers, along with the original crossovers here in the um, with those speakers. So uh, you know, I would have probably had to bought a set of these just because I love Bob Kreitz stuff. These would have probably been $375, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I didn't even know I was getting them, really, when I bought the, uh, bought the speakers. All right, I'm going to wrap this video up for today. Hopefully you learned a little something. Um, hopefully you'll get out and go to some of these swap fests. They're typically called ham fest. Um, you can find them by searching online, maybe your state, and then ham fest. Or uh, there's a website, www.arrl.com. It's the American Radio Relay League, and they keep up with all the uh, ham fests that are sponsored by them across the country. So um, get out there and dig. Uh, there's good stuff to be had out there. I hate, I hate to tell that because I'm creating more competition for myself, but hey, what the heck. This is a neat little unit, though, that we're going to be working on next, this Philco. i um, got a few screws out of it already. As you can see down in here, a nice little uh, tube amplifier with the 50CS tubes. Um, uh, be an interesting restoration. Stay tuned. This is uh, what's next on our video list. Thanks again everybody for watching. Keep giving us feedback. Um, we'll keep making great videos.